Hi, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. So I've been meaning to make a PC for quite some time, and I knew I was going to make one when the AMD Zen 3 CPUs were coming out, and also when the NVIDIA video cards were going to come out, even though there's really no stock of them anywhere, so it's going to be a bit hard to make this PC. <laughs> Uh, but we'll see what happens, and I guess we can always just play around with this um, system builder on PC Part Picker uh, until we get stock of the 3080s. Uh, but initially, uh, I wanted to make a PC around a 5900X and a RTX 3080. And as I was playing around with this, I started to realize that this is getting a bit more expensive than I thought. So uh, then I started to make a few more of these builds. So we might make this into a series of videos, um, but for today, we're just gonna look at the one build. And this is the original build that I wanted to make, which was, I guess, um, a no compromise build if you want to uh, call it that. But at the same time, it's still going to be um, value focused. And there's not too much RGB here, as you can notice, uh, because I'm really trying to get the price down here for this. Uh, we'll go through these components one by one and I'll give you my thoughts on uh, everything that I picked. And then uh, please comment below if you think there's something I can do better with this build. So before I start, I better tell you what my current PC is. So my current PC is an i5 4690K and originally I had a GTX 970 in there, but I upgraded that to a GTX 1070. Right now I have an Acer XB270 HU monitor, which is a 1440p 144Hz monitor. It has G-Sync in it and uh, yeah, there's no way to get around the fact that I need to get an NVIDIA video card. Uh, so NVIDIA have locked me up well. <laughs> uh, so I would love to get an AMD video card because um, it looks like they're going to compete on price. But um, with a G-Sync monitor, there's not too much I can do about that. AMD doesn't support G-Sync as far as I know. So I'd have to get a new monitor and that would cost me another three, $400 anyway. So I think um, for this... Uh, generation I probably have to stick with an NVIDIA card until I guess I move up to a 4k monitor so let's start from the top here so for the CPU I've got the 5900x now it says 3900x because in PC part picker the Zen 3 parts aren't in the database yet so uh, just imagine that this is $550 now the reason I picked the 5900X, it has 20% more performance and I may as well, if I'm building a $2,000 system, just spend the $150 extra to, um, I guess, future-proof the system a little bit, especially with the CPU because that's one of the things that you're not going to be removing anytime soon. And I think for the 5900X versus the 5800X, the 8-core part, I think it more makes more sense, at least for me anyway, because I will be doing content creation, so um, I want more cores. I've, I've seen a few people comment that the 5800X could be better in gaming than the 5900X, but honestly, um, the performance would be kind of minor, I think. I don't think that it would be that big of a difference. If it's any more than 5%, I would be very surprised. So I think... Um, the 12 cores uh, versus 8 cores would trump that um, for the extra $100 that you're paying anyway. So I'd probably recommend 5900X to most people. So for the CPU cooler, I went for the liquid cooler. And you can get any of the liquid coolers really. Um, but it's probably best to do a little bit more research into liquid coolers. I think the Corsair H100i and the Kraken and the Arctic liquid freezer cooler I think that's what it's called are more or less all around the same uh, level of performance and you know the funny thing is the tower coolers and the liquid coolers are kind of similar on performance uh, which is surprising really you'd expect a liquid cooler to be better but it's not but the top tower coolers are about um, the same amount of money for the liquid cooler and I think actually in this generation where we've got a 3080 which uh, outputs about 300 watts of heat I think um, it's better to leave that space uh, 
more open rather than having a big towel cooler in the way. And especially with the towel cooler, you'd be expelling hot air into the towel cooler and that could go into the, I guess, the fins. So I think it makes more sense to have a uh, liquid CPU cooler. It's not exposed to the CPU as much. Okay, so for the motherboard, I've gone with the MSI Mag X570 Tomahawk, and this got a lot of good reviews online, both with Hardware Unboxed and also with Gamers Nexus. Buildsoid said that this board has uh, really good VRMs and it's basically been over-designed. And I think Hardware Unboxed said this motherboard was about $200, and I don't think I've seen this board actually at $200. So I think they must have priced it wrong initially, and then when they saw the reviews, they decided to bump the price to about $250. And uh, I think um, this motherboard pretty much has everything that I want. It could do with one more M2 slot, uh, because I think two M2 slots is a little bit tight, uh, but I'd have to pay way more for that extra M2 slot, and I don't want to do that. Uh, so I think um, aside from that, it has dual BIOS, it has flashback BIOS, it has a button on the back of the uh, where all the ports are where you can just push the button for flash BIOS. I think that's really useful, especially if you're going to get Zen 3 and you don't need a CPU to flash the BIOS. Um, I think you do need dual BIOS, especially for people who are living remotely and not near a PC store. Uh, you can't, it's not so easy to take your hardware back. Uh, you'd have to ship it back to your um, remote PC retailer. And that could take like a week or two weeks. And that would be a real nuisance. So just pay that extra little bit more, $50 more, $100 more to get a motherboard with a dual BIOS. So if something happens, you know, you, you never know. Sometimes like when you flash the BIOS, there's something that you don't expect and then it doesn't work and then you push the reset button and all of a sudden uh, you can't get into the system anymore. So just much easier to have dual BIOS and then you have you always have a BIOS to fall back onto. Let's go to the memory. and uh, I've got 64 gigs of memory. Memory is really cheap right now, so may as well just go and get uh, extra memory. And I've got 64 gigabytes. Um, I think games later on we'll start to take advantage of this memory especially with the extra ssd performance in the consoles on pc they might be looking to use the system memory um, as a stopgap so i think um, having a little bit more memory doesn't hurt i don't think everybody needs 64 gigabytes um, i put that in there just because it's just an extra hundred dollars Okay, so with the SSDs, if you haven't already, make sure to go and watch my SSD video from about a week ago. And I talk uh, quite a lot and in depth about why SSDs are really important for PC gamers this generation. But in terms of actually picking one out, uh, this is really difficult because I found that there's a whole range of SSDs. They start from having a SATA SSD all the way to like a Gen 4 SSDs. And there are all these different types of SSDs in between with different prices. And they use different NAND types and some have a DRAM cache and some don't, uh, which means that the read writes are a bit slower if you don't have that DRAM cache. With this, um, you basically get what you pay for. If you want the highest quality, you want to go with like the Samsung 970 Evo Plus or the 980 Pro, which I believe uh, just came out. The 980 Pro will be the Gen 4, I think. And then the 970 Evo Plus is the Gen 3 right now. If you want something super cheap, uh, you probably want to get one of the crucial P1s or something to that level. I think the Intel 660P is also around that level. And they use a very basic QLC NAND flash. And that means like the sequential speeds around like 2000 megabytes per second. Uh, write speed is like 1700 megabytes per second. So you're looking at that level of performance. Then you can step up to like a higher Gen 3 SSD, which will be around 3500 megabytes per second and around I guess about the same, 3,000 uh, for the write speed as well. And then lastly, you have the Gen 4 SSDs, which are about 5,000 gigabytes per second now. And they're really expensive. They're like $200 per one terabyte. So what I've got here is a Sabrent Rocket Q1, and it's $120 for one terabyte of 
the Gen 3 storage, which is 3,000 megabytes per second. And I think that's going to be good enough for me uh, for a little bit longer. And then what I will do will be um, I will get another stick down the line, maybe two terabytes uh, when they're a little bit cheaper. And I think 3,000 megabytes per second should roughly be enough to last me quite a while because Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S, their SSD is around 2,400 megabytes per second. So I wanted to get around that level of performance. If I got the Crucial P1, it's about $100 and it's only a $20 difference. Okay, so for the video card, that's pretty self-explanatory. This is a 3080 and uh, we might do more videos where I use a 3070 instead and see how I make a build with that because honestly, the 3080, um, the 3080 is a really interesting proposition because it's 10 gigabytes. It's so too with the 3070 as well because that's eight gigabytes. But I think with the 3070, then you're going to upgrade it in an, another generation. So with the 200 or $300 that you save for getting a 3070, you could put that towards a 4070 if you wanted to. So the first thing actually is that I think um, people don't have to worry too much about, I guess, that extra performance the, or the factory overclock that some of these cards have because I think people are overpaying for that extra bit of uh, amount of performance. If you see, like, say, the MSI Gaming X Trio, uh, that has an extra 5% performance, and then you end up having to pay, like, an extra $100. And I'm not sure if that's really worth it. And as well as that, there's not too much... There's not too much overclocking room on these cards anyways. So it doesn't make sense to, um, say, spend $850 on the Asus ROG Strix, even though that's an awesome card. Uh, I'm not sure about spending an extra, uh, what is it, like $150 um, getting an extra 10% performance. So I'm thinking like um, maybe just to get the base level card. So it would be the Azus Tough or the MSI Ventus or even the EVGA uh, ICX3. Um, so we'll see what cards are available at the MSRP. And I guess the other consideration is that the 3080 versus the 3070, I'm almost leaning towards making a 3070 build because I'm at 1440p right now anyway. That extra 10 frames per second isn't that much of a concern. It's only a concern at the end of the generation when you dip below 60 frames per second. All right, so now I have the case. I need to do a lot more research on these cases. So I've just picked out the one from Gamers Nexus, uh, which, was, which won the case of the year. And that's the Fantex Eclipse P400A. It says that a lot of good airflow in this system. The only thing I'm concerned about this case is that whether there's too much dust going into the system. I don't know. We'll, I guess we'll try it out. It's $70, so that seems reasonable to me. Okay, finally, we have the power supply. Okay, so if we look at the estimated wattage for this, this is 473 watts and the video card is a 2070, which is about 200 watts and the 3080 will be an extra 100 watts on top of this. So really you're looking at about 573 watts for the estimated wattage. So let's say about 600 watts. So if this is about 600 watts, then you should allow at least another 10% extra headroom for any like extra things that you're gonna plug in later or upgrade later. And also, uh, because this is an 80 plus gold uh, power supply, then that has a 90% efficiency rating. So it will operate at 90% um, of that 850 watts. So let's just add on another 60 watts for that. So from 600, you're really getting 720 watts. So technically, 750 watts would be just fine for this system. Uh, but... You know what I've been seeing is that um, on some of these 3080 cards, um, especially like the Asus ROG Strix, uh, they've been listing a power supply recommendation of about 850 watts. So really there's no harm to go a little bit more. So the difference between a 750 watt and the 850 watt in terms of price is about uh, $20. And also we have no idea like, you know, with graphics cards down the line, 
if they're going to use more energy, especially now that we have this race between AMD and NVIDIA looking to one-up each other. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're seeing such high power usage with our video cards. And I've gone with a Corsair power supply because actually I build a lot of office PCs for my uh, work. So I've always been using Corsair. So uh, they're working well for me. Uh, there are other brands. I think like EVGA is a good one. So in the end, all of this added up to be $2,177. Now, the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X will be another $130, let us say $170 on top of this. So this is going to be about $2,350. And honestly, that's a little bit steep, especially when I've uh squeezed the prices in um in most places where I could so for example there's no RGB anywhere and I've gone with the base level of 3080 card I've gone with a base type of level for the case for the storage I didn't go for a gen 4 storage uh really the only part where I splurged was the 64 gigabytes of memory and maybe the liquid cooler where I, I could get like a cooler master hyper evo 212 and save like another 90 dollars uh but overall uh yeah i think 2300 is uh quite expensive i don't even know if i can buy a pc right now at these prices because the 3080 the prices are way above msrp where i am and I'm assuming the 5900X, if it gets low on supply, it's going to do the same thing. So I might not be buying this PC for quite a while. I don't think I would buy this PC if I have to pay more than the MSRP. Let's put it that way. Okay, so this has been a really fun video for me. Um, a lot more fun than having to be in front of the camera. So uh, let me know your thoughts on this PC build. And maybe I'll try and do a little bit more of these if uh, it doesn't completely tank the YouTube algorithm. Uh, but let me know what you think of this PC, uh, if you have any comments or you could make it a little bit better or how I can save money on this. And if you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Uh, that would really help me out. And also um, give a like on the video if you like this video and helped you out as well. All right, um, see you in the next video.